The procedures you will learn today are based on the principles found in the Tactical Combat Casualty Care Guidelines, the Institute of Surgical Research and Joint Trauma System Clinical Practice Guidelines, and Vision Center of Excellence Recommendations. Medics, corpsmen, EMTs, and emergency response personnel, even bystanders or battle buddies, will most likely be the first responders to a scene. As such, your actions will determine if an individual site can be saved or lost. Although the eye accounts for only 0.1% of the total body surface area, eye injuries account for 10 to 15% of combat wounds and for 10 to 25% of injuries from natural disasters and terrorist acts. Over 30% of combat head wounds will have associated eye damage, as will many civilian and terrorist polytrauma injuries. And because the eye is notoriously unforgiving to damage, the initial treatment at the point of injury often sets the foundation for the ultimate outcome. No, you're not. Do suspect eye injuries if any part of the eyelid or eye is damaged. There may be an underlying penetrating eye wound. Give me Parrish, I need a medevac now. Be particularly suspicious of any type of damage of any degree to any of the tissues that would otherwise be protected by eye armor or sunglasses. Eye injuries can easily be overlooked or missed. Blood, dirt, and debris that accompany trauma may mask eye damage and make the task even more difficult, as does darkness. The closer a laceration is to the eye, the more suspicious you should be that there is a penetrating eye injury. Brown Company's here! Unlike most wounds, where pressure is usually the appropriate first response, it is vitally important not to put any pressure on the eye. Patches, dressings, or gauze should never be placed under the shield or on top of the eye, as that could transmit external pressure, causing delicate intraocular tissues to extrude, leading to limited vision, blindness, or loss of the eye. The single most important principle in treating an eye injury is to protect the eye from pressure and additional trauma by applying a rigid shield over it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Never pressure on the eye. Never pressure on the eye. Sorry, Doc. How can I help then? I need you to do exactly what I tell you to do. OK. Get in the bag. Give me two shields. Gotcha. If there are two. If not, grab me some goggles. The only time you should not immediately shield an eye is following chemical exposure. If dealing with a chemical injury, irrigate the eye immediately and copiously before doing anything else. Chemical wounds can quickly cause irreparable damage to the eye or even blindness. Good thing those fuel cans didn't explode out there. We'd have some serious chemical issues to deal with. Sergeant Bennett, can you and HM2 Janice come up and show us how you would place and secure the eye armor? Almost anything that rigidly vaults the eye can serve as an effective shield. Aluminum shields are malleable enough to allow for modifying the vault and contour as needed, while still maintaining rigidity. Polycarbonate shields are exceptionally firm and maintain excellent protection, provided the curvature is deep enough to clear the injured eye. In the event a commercially designed rigid shield is not available, various substitutions can be utilized. A primary alternative is the service member's anti-ballistic eye protection, or iPro. Because eye protection is made of ballistic grade polycarbonate plastic, it is exceptionally rigid even when slightly damaged. Similar commercial eye pro can be used in civilian scenarios, such as runners or cyclist eye pros. Other alternatives include the bottom of a coffee or paper cup, though this option may be more applicable to civilian and urban settings than remote combat environments. Yet another alternative could be using a moldable splint. In short, anything that rigidly vaults over the eye without touching it to prevent and redistribute pressure can act as an effective shield. Once the shield is placed over the eye, it can be secured in any fashion. Do you want some saline or ointment? No, we never put anything into the eyes. Never put anything in the eyes. When authorized, start systemic antibiotics early within a military combat environment, but do so only if it does not induce nausea or vomiting. You want to minimize convulsive movement. If possible, Check the vision in each eye separately, but do not pry open a swollen or closed eyelid in order to do this. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see, Doc. Okay, great. Still see me. 
secure the eye with a rigid shield to protect and prevent further injury. The key aspect of any effective shield is that it vaults cleanly over the eye without touching the lid or eye by resting on the orbital bones of the forehead and cheek. The shield will prevent direct pressure from reaching the eye and it protects the damaged eye from further accidental direct trauma and environmental particulates. Thank you, Dr. Thomas and Sergeant Hall. Additionally, this is a perfect example of how to place iPro with a head wrap. Always place a shield or eye pro over the eyes first and then apply the wrap. Do not allow the wrap to cover the eyes directly, even if they are uninjured. Ocular injuries require prompt evaluation and treatment by specialists. The sooner the casualty is referred to an ophthalmologist for treatment, the better the potential outcome. Even though eyes are extremely delicate organs, they can be resilient if given a chance. Many severely injured eyes can be repaired at a medical facility if they are dressed properly in the field. Go ahead, go get me a, a stretcher now. We're going to tight in muscle and get out here. Roger that. By using eye shields, you'll be positioning your patients for the best possible vision health outcomes. It is the single most important action in saving vision. Remember, shields save sight.